Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fish Trap Reads. My name is Mike Midlow. This winter, we're celebrating a great work of literature together as a community. It's been a book club favorite for years. It's The Jump Off Creek by Molly Gloss, the story of a homesteader and her struggles to settle in the mountains of Oregon. Pick up a copy and join in. This week's special program is presented by the National Historic Oregon Trail Interpretive Center in Baker City and is one of many we're offering during Fish Trap Reads to help all of us gain a deeper understanding of the life of an Oregon homesteader. Recordings are available at fishtrap.org and on Fish Trap's YouTube channel so you can watch them anytime in your classroom, at your library, with your book club, or around the dinner table. Before we get going, I want to say thanks to our Fish Trap Reads sponsors, The Book Loft, Community Bank, Oregon Arts Commission, and Pacific Power Foundation. Okay, let's get to it. Today's special event is titled A Woman's Role in the 19th Century American West with Sarah Sherman. She's a project manager at the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. You're about to learn a little bit more about the role women played upon settling the Oregon Territory, including 19th century gender norms and stereotypes, women as moral guardians and purveyors of culture, as well as a little bit about women's clothing and fashion. So please welcome. Sarah Sherman. Hi, Mike. It's Sarah here. I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you guys, so bear with me as I get everything loaded. But as I do that, I just want to introduce myself. Yes, I am the project manager uh, for the National Historic Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. While we are closed, we miss all of our friends coming to visit us, but we are very grateful that we do have temporary exhibits at the Baker Heritage Museum. They have been fantastic hosts for us. Um, and that's where we're filming today. So I will go ahead and get started um, with my presentation, a, women's, a Woman's Role in the American West. So just to dive in, I want to do a quick image recall with you guys. What comes to mind when you're thinking of Western women? Is it the typical images from your Google search if you're looking on your phone right now, um, trying to pull something up? Is it something like Annie Oakley? Because that's typically what I like to think of, of Westerns and, and women in that culture, um, the notable women, right? The quick, quick captures. I'm gonna share a couple of images. Were these the things that were coming up for you too? Um, women with guns that are very exciting and daring and adventurous, or, you know, our soiled doves, uh, women's of the saloon or women of the night. Um, yeah. Why do you think these images are so quick to pop into our brains? Yeah, I'm expecting you to look to the person across the table and, and ask these questions with each other. Um, typically, these are quick images or are memories that we can pull from because of the books that we read or because of the movies that we watch, TV shows, right? Um, I've got a few TV shows that come to my mind, Yellowstone, 1883, those fun uh, things that are coming out right now, right? Um, but another point is that this was normal um, and we like to, you know, take our enjoyment from adventurous, rebellious um, characters because that's fun. That's not the mundane lifestyle that we typically lead. So we want to go find something more exciting. Um, but another point to this is that those those characters or, or what we typically do see are middle aged, young, white women. And that's because of history and our, our bias here. So the Oregon Trail is really exciting because it was well-documented. Women on the trail had their journals and they wrote in them pretty regularly. So as a historian, we can go back to these uh, records and we know what was going on in their day-to-day -day lives, which is really great. Um, and it it's just a point that no, I, yes, it's easiest first to image, you know, white women on the trail, but it was no special class, um, no age group, no demographic women of all different uh, relationship statuses were on the trail. And so the contradiction comes in of 
it wasn't one thing, right? Um, it was different women at different points of their lives, all making this journey together. And it, and the exciting things that we recall again from books and movies, they weren't necessarily doing those types of activities. It was the the mundane, you know, day to day chores that we, I think, can all relate to. So. One thing that I want to point out specifically is Molly's uh, great way of putting the mundane um, into her into her text. So she talks about Lydia having to tuck and untuck her skirts constantly, um, and that's because Lydia was doing a lot of hard work on her uh, homestead, and she needed to, you know not wear a skirt. And I think we can all think about how many times we counted that in the book. I have it right here. When I reread it, I will tally up every time that she has to physically maneuver her clothes around the things that she's doing and how impractical for, for a modern day woman, at least for me, to think about having to wear a dress for walking 2000 miles or over four months. Um, that just seems so crazy and bizarre. But they they did that for a couple of reasons. One, it might have been the only clothes that they had, right? And they didn't pack all of their wardrobe with them when they they hit the trail. But it was also a sense of normalcy. Um, and that's what it really comes down to. They were still wearing the fashion of, you know, the East Coast city life. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of transition for them to make uh, when you know, hike across the country. Uh, so it's really interesting. They took a lot of pride in their clothes and um, and the stuff that they had to do because as their scenery was changing from the very familiar home life that they had to something completely different and things that they weren't expecting, that's what happened. But it's also interesting because again, you think such an impractical stance. There are entries and diaries where women, their skirts got caught up in the wagons and they crushed their legs, um, you know, impracticality with the weather, having to ford a river in a dress. It's, it's really hard for me to wrap my mind around, but this was their reality. Um, there's there's stories of women's dresses or skirts catching on fire when they were cooking so it's just one of those that was their life um but again they took pride in their clothes especially in their diary entries if you go and read some of um our recommended book reads they talk about that stuff um so moving on um as far as fashion it was a sense of normalcy for them um and that's what they had to do. Um, sometimes they did wear they wore pants, but Lydia having to tuck her skirt into her waistband and, and make pants, it's because of the work that she was doing, right? Riding her mule. She wanted to be um, practical, but she also wanted to conform to some social norms when she needed to. So women's work on the trail looked a whole lot of, you know, maintaining the household when they were in their comfortable lifestyle before they hit the trail. So clothes, cleaning, cooking, and childcare. Um, they still had to do all of that on the trail. Um, I'm sure we can all imagine trying to cook over a, a campfire in our Dutch ovens um, or doing laundry. Uh, they Again, women had to still maintain that sense of normalcy um, and culture when they were coming across. So not only did they have to do this stuff, they were tough women that hit the trail, just like Molly um, points to with Lydia, is they had to do other things. Sometimes that was taking care of injured people, taking care of sick people. They had to go get the firewood and the water, um, take care of the livestock. So they had to branch out and do other things. And the point that I really want to hit home with you all is the importance of the mundane here. So women were keeping the normalcy. They were bringing over their culture, even though it wasn't physically in the wagon when they packed it. They were bringing their, you know, holidays that they celebrated and their uh, biases and their gender norms. All of that was in their person that they brought over from east to west. So I think that's important to think about why our culture is the way that it is. It's because 
it comes from what it was before. Um, and lastly, women rose to the occasion, um, tougher than nails, sometimes tougher than the men. They took on the physical labor. They harbored a lot of the emotional turmoil <laughs> that was brought to them in this period of transition. So, so they shouldered a lot. And I think that's really important to think about um, for, again, the culture that we have. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, my contact information is at the bottom of this slide. If you think of anything, have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Sarah Sherman from the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, I learned some things about skirts and being just the experience of being there. And it shows that Sarah uh, read uh, the Jump Off Creek and really thought about it. And I really appreciate all the time you put in to creating this presentation. Um, get a hold of Sarah or anybody at the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center to learn more. And you folks join us next Wednesday, March 22nd for the Fish Trap Reads finale with author Molly Gloss. You can visit with Molly in person here at Fish Trap, where I am right now, or catch the event online at fishtrap.org or on Fish Trap's YouTube channel. You won't want to miss it. Thanks to everybody for joining in on this special Fish Trap Reads event. Learn more at fishtrap.org.